So this week we're going to be talking about uh, what it means to have saving faith. What is saving faith? And you know, we need to look at the word of God to find out what saving faith is. And as we look in the book of James, James chapter two, beginning in verse uh, 14, uh, James begins to explain what is not saving faith and understand something that just because somebody says that they have faith doesn't necessarily mean that they have faith. James says in James chapter two, beginning in verse 14, uh, uh, what doeth it profit, uh, my brethren, uh, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? And so he's saying with his mouth, well, I've got faith, right? But he has no works. He's saying, can that faith save him? And we're going to look at all of this over the next few days, but let me skip on down to verse 17. He says, even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Now, is James teaching something different than, uh, say, Paul taught? You know, last week we looked several times at Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, and it says, uh, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Clearly, uh, God so loved the world that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible clearly teaches that it's by faith that we're justified, it's by faith that we're saved, it's by faith that we receive the free gift of God, not by works, least any man um, should boast. And we're going to look at that, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, uh, this week as well. James isn't trying to argue here that it's that we're not saved by faith. What James is trying to argue here is that if all you say is you have faith, but you don't have anything behind that faith that backs up that faith, then that's not true saving faith. What he's saying right here is if all you have is lip service unto God and there is nothing that has been enacted behind that lip service that is unto God, that's a false faith. That's not real. And so he's not arguing that we're saved by faith. He's arguing, no, we are saved by faith. But yet once we have the faith, once we have the faith, then there should be works that back up that faith. There should be something that indicates that we truly have faith. We're not the same person. And see, we, what we need to understand is lip service doesn't save us. Just saying that I have faith and just speaking these things out, that's not what saves us. What saves us is true faith in Jesus Christ, submitting ourselves unto his lordship, surrendering ourselves unto him wholeheartedly, not just lip service, and that he is the Lord and the savior of our life. And then what happens is that once we're saved, the Holy Spirit then comes to reside within us because we now have a relationship with Jesus Christ and we're saved. And once the Holy Spirit comes to live within us, the moment that we're saved, he will begin that work immediately of regeneration and immediately of sanctification. Are we going to be perfect uh, all of a sudden? No, but he's going to be begin that work. And so therefore, we're going to have works. We're going to have a demonstration immediately that God is doing something within our life. Now, understand something that once we're saved, God declares us as righteous, as completely righteous. That's what I talked about last week, that imputed justification, that, that we're justified by God the moment that we're saved. But understand, God is a righteous God and God is not just going to declare us righteous and leave us unrighteous. No, he's going to begin that work of sanctification within us. So if all we have is lip service and God has not done a work within our life, friends, that's not true saving faith. That's lip service. It's nothing. It's of no value. It's of no meaning. All we're doing is just speaking words and words are meaningless. But unless our faith has truly been in Jesus and we've allowed him to come into our life, we've asked him, we invited him to come into our life to be our Lord, to be our Redeemer, to be our Savior, to justify us, to make us righteous, 
We've given him permission to do a work within our life that we're going to talk more about tomorrow, but to do a work within our life that will truly save us and truly sanctify us and to begin a life of good works. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow. But salvation isn't just cheap lip, lip service. It's true surrender unto Jesus Christ as Lord, giving him permission to do a work within our life that changes us, and transforms us from the unrighteous person that we were to the righteous person that God has called us to be. Now, friends, that's good news because we can't do it on our own. But if we surrender and submit unto him, friends, he surely can do it within us. So share this video so others can hear it and others can receive it once they believe it.